So OpenAI just released ChatGPT for teachers, but is it really all that? Do teachers need to get on it? I think yes. Let me show you why in this video. Okay, so I was on a call with OpenAI last week as they announced this ChatGPT version for teachers. Many of you know I am uh, fanatical about using ChatGPT. It's changed my life in many ways and given me uh, the flexibility, the creativity to do just so many things. So you're gonna wanna go to openai slash index slash ChatGPT hyphen for hyphen teachers. And that'll take you to this page here. And it's a free version of ChatGPT that's built for teachers. What's nice is that it gives you a secure workspace to work in. There's going to be a ton of features. I'm going to talk about those in a moment. You have to actually be verified to play with this thing, to get in here, to use it. So it's not just for anybody off the street. So before I get into it, let me just read off some notes here about what's coming down the pipeline, what's already there and then we can dive into some demos. So ChatGPT for teachers, it's a safe K-12 workspace. There's no student data used for tracking. There's no, it's not stored, any of that. The safety settings are locked by default. So in case you didn't know, there were safety settings in the in main uh, stream ChatGPT that I've done videos on and showed people how to turn off so that you don't get your chats uh, used to train the model, which you don't want as a teacher that is. And it uses Sheer ID to verify your email through the district email. So right away, it's going to get rid of people that don't belong. Here's the key thing, privacy and compliance. It's already aligned with major state data privacy frameworks. In California, it's got the NDPA. It has it in Illinois and Virginia. There's m tons of new agreements that are coming along in every state's DPA to protect all of that. So what do you get with this? You get access to GPT 5.1, which is a powerful model. That's the one I use all the time with my paid version. You get free image generation. Teachers can make custom GPTs, which is amazing. And we'll talk about that. And then it has free third-party connectors. So like Google Drive and Canva. Plus you can link your custom GPTs to any tool as long as you have an API. And admins out there is gonna give you full control similar to the EDU version. So sounds good, right? What's not included at launch? There's no agent mode. So that's okay. I have the paid version. I have agent mode. It's amazing. But as a teacher, I would love that down the pipeline. Maybe it's an add-on, but it's definitely useful to have an agent mode doing things for you while you're doing other things. There's no deep research for this, so it's not there yet. Maybe they're going to add that. I'm not sure yet. But at the start, there'll be no deep research. And you can't go into any um, advanced reasonings um, like ChatGPT01 or any of those you're, you're stuck with 5.1, but it's plenty to get the job done. The key here is that they really wanted this to be a lightweight version so that it could be free, which teachers will love. All right, so let's just dive in and see what we can do here. As you see, I'm on the page I told you to go to. There's a login at the top right. There's get verified here. Once you click on that, it's going to take you to the sheer ID. You have to put in all your information, uh, your school ID, and uh, you're good to go. Okay, so this is ChatGPT for teachers. You can see it up here. The flagship model is GPT 5.1. Uh, now here, similar to the other chat uh, GPT, you've got your uh, ability to ask right here, anything you want. Underneath it, this is something I really liked, was organization knowledge. So if I click on that, it's gonna let me uh, connect things like uh, my Google Drive, because maybe inside my Google Drive, which I do, I have um, most of my lesson plans, uh, syllabus, uh, things like that about my, uh, about my classroom. And now it'll pull that information from there. I don't have to go in there and upload things. It works with Gmail, which I like. Um, now that being said, I wish we had agent mode because I could have it automatically be set to create uh, emails for parents or whatever. And then I can just check them off and see if I like what it says and then let it go or revise it. But, um, you know, that'll come down the pipeline, I think. Google Calendar is fantastic and let me know what's going on and 
and do all that stuff. And then you see Outlook, a bunch of different things here that you can connect with. So right off the bat, that's super cool. And then underneath that, you'll see it gives you some prompts to start things right away. So create learning objectives, generate an image, tailor a lesson plan. You can click this little button here and it'll change things for you as well, which I think is really great. All right, so down here it says invite your district's teachers for free. So that's nice. You can just click on this and you'll invite them. You can do collaboration from other teachers in the district. That's what's really nice. First thing I want to do here, uh, if you're new to this or you're just not really a power user yet um, and you're just like, oh, what do I do with this tool? I want to go over here. I see that I've got new chat at the top. So if I click that, it just opens up a new chat. I can search old chats. I have a library if I want. And then here is what I want to get into, which is projects. So I'm going to click on projects once. And in here, I'm going to type in... Um, uh, intro to media arts. Okay. So I teach intro to media arts, intermediate media arts, advanced media arts, social media. I teach a ton of things. I want to keep them all separated in separate projects, which are like folders. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create my project. So now once I have this open, if I go to the top right, there's three little, uh, dots here. I want to go to add instructions and this is really powerful so i'm going to do um uh this is for uh let's see this is for um a high school uh intro to media arts course we use ipads and iphones for creating content Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, we meet for two uh, two-hour classes and one fifty-minute class. And then I could also say we use Premiere Pro, we use whatever, blah blah blah. But for now, I'm just going to keep this in here just to keep a general idea of what's going on. So I'm going to save that. Um, at least it has some kind of instructions. But if I go up here into uh, GPTs and you want to click on explore and inside of this I want you to look for custom instruction generator so just click on custom instruction generator and it's the number one that pulls up so this is going to take that prompt we had and make it um, a thousand times better so I'm going to click on start and that's open there now I want to go back to uh, this one and I'm just going to go back into my instructions and I am going to copy this and go back into this GPT now. And now I'm going to put inside here. This is for my high school, right? So I wrote all that and let's see what it does. So this is gonna transform your instructions to make it so much better. So you can see it's already great, right? Age appropriate for high school students, aligned with introductory level media arts goals, etc., etc. I'm going to go back and make one little change. So if you see up here, um, I can hit this little edit message button. So I'm going to write, this is a CTE elective class. And I'm going to go boom and let it redo it now based on that. It's a CTE elective. See, it says right there. It's great. Now it knows even more about this. So I've already given it some great stuff here. All of it's there. I can come in here and change things if anytime I want to, but these instructions are way better. I'm going to click on copy. We're going to go back into media arts and we're going to go up to the edit instructions and we're going to get rid of that old one and put this big one in there. So now it's got some amazing instructions to uh, get things going. I'm going to get rid of this prompt in there that it doesn't need. So now I'm ready to start work. And I've put together some prompts for you guys to get started. And these are my great prompts that I use all the time. My number one prompt that I want you guys to, um, to learn to use. So first I'm going to tell it about being a high school teacher. It already knows that. Um, that's what I'm looking for because I put those instructions in, but sometimes I like to put that back in there. So I'm giving it a role to play. Second, I want to create a lesson plan outline on mobile video basics. Okay, maybe it's the beginning of the year. 
I want to get these kids off to the fresh start. Um, this is for grade 11. I'm just going to change this to 9 through 12 because that's what I get. And then this will be, instead of 45 minutes, I'm going to do 50 minutes. Uh, students will use iPads and iPhones. Okay. So I'm giving it some constraints, right? Grades 9 through 12, 50-minute class. Students use iPads and iPhones. And then I want bullet points with quick uh, assessments. I'm going to click OK. So here's my class duration, my lesson intent, materials. I have a lesson hooks, um, mini lesson inside, demos, all the things that I need to do. Here's my marching orders. I can expand this into a two-day version um, and add feedback, etc. So this is really good. I can then tell it to make a student facing one so that I can copy and put that into Google Classroom or whatever I'm using. So this is good to go, the four step prompt. Always remember that it's simple, good to go. Let's take it a step further. The next one, it says show reasoning for your steps. So I'm gonna get that one. I'm gonna go back into chat really quick. I'm gonna go back to the top here. Once again, I'm going to uh, change this up and add it, show your reasoning in steps. Here's the high level reasoning. You asked for this, I created this. So, you know, this will be more in depth depending on what you're creating. And there it gave it again, okay. And then we can keep going down some of the other ones. This is by far the most important part of prompting in my opinion. Um, I use this on every single chat that I do. It's baked into my instructions. And if anything, you, come away with from this, this should be it. Ask me three clarifying questions before your answer, okay? This is what my beginners do, this is what I tell them to do, three clarifying questions. Personally, I ask it to ask me clarifying questions until it is 95% sure it can complete the task at hand, okay? So when I do that, I get 15, 20 questions sometimes, depending on how uh, uh, you know, intricate my prompt is. And then it gives me the ability to talk back and forth with chat um, and have a conversation so it can get clarity on what I want it to be uh, done here. Okay, huge importance. So let's see what it does. Okay, so it's telling me I can't uh, show my full internal reasoning. Um, so that's just something that it does. It doesn't want you to know what's behind the Wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> it's just trying to say, well, I'm going to show you some of it, but I'm not going to show you everything because it's proprietary or whatever. No big deal. But here's the big icing on the cake here. Per my instructions, here are three clarifying questions I need to ask. One, what is the primary goal? So the, I'm going to put number one, and it's uh, confidence in creating video content with mobile devices. Number two, it says, uh, do you want students to record a short practice click uh, or only the foundational? I'm gonna say uh, foundational concepts. Three, do I want a, the assessment to be a quick performance task, a uh, short written check-in or both? I want both. And that's asked me good questions. So now let's see how much deeper my lesson plan is going to be looking now. So here's the summary. Here's the warm up. So we're trying to build confidence. Okay. Here's my structured lessons here. Here's my core lesson. Stable. It's showing me all the stuff. So it's gotten even deeper and it looks amazing. Here is its uh, explanation of its approach. I followed your requirements, emphasized foundational concepts, and included both written and performance. Structured to maximize hands-on practice aligned with these skills. So now I know it knows what it's doing. And now on the bottom, it's telling me uh, I can also generate a printable student handout, slides for the mini lesson, extended to our version of this. I can go in there and tweak it and say, you know what, they're taking longer than I thought. Let's do this in a two-day thing. So we got one 50-minute uh, and one two-hour course. But look how fast it is to make lesson plans with ChatGPT for teachers. All right, so let's look at some of the other features that we talked about. Like I showed you that it can work with Google Drive or whatever you're working on. Um, it can integrate with other tools uh, or other systems using API and MCP standards. Um, that's all tech talk. Don't worry about it. 
uh, custom GPTs, like I showed you the one we did with the custom instructions generator, you can learn to create your own. And by the way, you're going, I don't code. What do you mean? All you have to do is ask chat GPT. I want to make a custom GPT for my classroom that does X, Y, Z. And then once again, ask it to ask you questions to clarify it up. And then you can make your own custom GPT. Um, but you can do stuff that like automate lesson plans every day, rewrite materials, check alignment standards. All these can be custom GPTs. Let me just show you really quick. If I go back into explore on the top right corner, if I click on create here, it's telling me, you know, what do I want to make? And this is how you make your custom GPTs right here. The yeah, open AI has just partnered with Stanford, um, who they've got Utley up there. Who's an amazing professor who's huge into uh, ChatGPT, uh, one of my people that I look at as a mentor. Um, and then multiple universities are using this in K-12 research. It's going to have research focus for metacognition, learning outcomes, and guardrails for student-facing tools. They're going to have a student version planned, but not until a long-term research and safety development, which is super smart for admin and district support we're talking about district-wide verification tools uh, domain level onboarding for entire sites and documentation onboarding guides workflows all of that's coming down the pipeline like i said this is like a week old um, but openai also has a great community and uh, i'll put a link in the comments for that uh, where you can go in there and uh, talk with other teachers i'm in there i love it so if you've been on the fence ever and you just haven't jumped on board about using uh, a tool like ChatGPT for your classroom, let me tell you, it'll be groundbreaking for you. Every teacher that I talk to and show how to do these things, they're just like, <laughs> so please leave some comments if you have any questions. This is a fantastic tool. Um, I'll put those four prompts that we talked about in the description as well. So you can just copy and paste them. If you guys like to hear about prompts every day, I do a daily a TikTok at Teaching with Intelligence. Would love to see you over there. Thanks so much for watching and have a great week.